Hello, my name is Dr. Ebony Cornish, and I'm a functional medicine physician here at the Amen Clinic in Washington, D.C. I specialize in the treatment of numerous conditions, including Lyme disease and co-infections, hormone imbalances, gastrointestinal health, heavy metal toxicity and mold exposure, among other conditions. Now, the topic I'm presenting today is one that is very important to me and one that, quite honestly, I'm very passionate about. Pediatric inflammatory multi system syndrome. Now, this is a syndrome that you may not be aware of, but has been shown to be associated with COVID-19 and in fact can be a manifestation of COVID-19 among the pediatric population. Now, it's important to note that we once thought that the pediatric population was not as susceptible or susceptible at all to COVID-19 but we now know different. So it's important as we start to open up our cities and we reopen our schools that we understand more about this syndrome and what impact it can have on our children. I think it's still important that we educate our children on COVID-19, that it is a virus and that we need to remain safe. One thing I've done with my three-year-old triplets is that I've made sure they understood why our lives had changed, why they were no longer going to preschool, why mommy and daddy were both working from home all the time. And I simply told them right when the pandemic started that there was a virus, coronavirus, that made a lot of people ill. And as a result, it was important that we remained at home. Surprisingly enough, about a few weeks later, I heard a lot of ruckus in the front of my home and my three children were at the window. And in fact, they were yelling at the children outside, our neighbors who had gathered together just to play some games and ride their bikes. And there was a play date. So it had to be about 12 children and adults just enjoying each other's company, which is important. However, they weren't practicing social distancing rules. And the one thing I heard, instead of my children wanting to go outside to participate, my oldest daughter of a few minutes, she's yelled, hey, coronavirus is outside, stay inside, stay safe. Which took me off guard a bit. So I said, wait, if I can educate three-year-old toddlers, then anyone can get this topic. So, as they went on, you know, telling their neighbors that it was a virus outside, my other doctor, my other daughter, well, she is also, thinks she's a doctor at three years old, she started to yell, you don't want to get sick? And I said, oh gosh, I'm on to something. So that's important. We remember that as we, we enter, coronavirus is not over. Coronavirus is still something that we're able to transmit to one another. And we still don't have a cure for this disease. And we're learning more and more about it on a daily basis. So just be cautious and aware and not frantic. So more about pediatric inflammatory multi-system syndrome. This is an inflammatory syndrome that's very similar to one called Kawasaki. And Kawasaki disease is an inflammatory disease among pediatric population of the blood vessels. So it can cause numerous other systemic symptoms, which is also what can take place with pediatric inflammatory multi-system syndrome, or we're going to call it PIMS for short, going further. Some of the symptoms that have been shown to be associated with PIMS are not the traditional symptoms that we find with COVID-19. And in fact, these symptoms can be quite nebulous. Some of the things to monitor for, diarrhea. So gastrointestinal complaints is something of primary concern with PIMS as well as rashes, nonspecific rashes, warm hands and soles, 
um, look out for that. Fevers longer than five days or any fever should make a red flag to just do more evaluation. If your child is coming in and they're overly tired and exhausted, that's something to also monitor for. There can be very serious cardiovascular outcomes that are negative and associated with PIMS. One of which is inflammation of the heart muscle, which is called the myocardium. So the heart muscle becomes inflamed. And you can also have inflammation of the sac that covers the heart, which is called the pericardium, okay? This disorder is diagnosed by a health professional and usually in the hospital. Some of the symptoms are tested for and clinically you're screened for them, but then you also have a comprehensive workup that's performed. And this can include chest x-ray, blood work, including CBC, which is your blood count, inflammatory markers that might be checked as well, you want to get an understanding of the electrolytes, and especially with the gastrointestinal complications, you get more worried about electrolyte imbalances among children. Some children may even have EKGs, which are when you place leads on the heart and you get a better understanding of heart rate and rhythm. And also echocardiogram which is an ultrasound of the heart where you can evaluate for some of those different disorders or inflammatory cardiac muscles that I mentioned earlier. It's important that we take this seriously and that we do as much as possible to prepare our children to re-enter the world. And as we know, we're going to be exposed to a new normal, one that we've never seen before. The Center for Disease Control is now recommending that children over the age of two actually wear masks. And you can find at numerous sites pediatric masks that are safe for your children. But keep in mind that children under the age of two should not wear masks due to that risk of suffocation. It's important that we continue physical distancing for a while until we get a treatment for this disease. Try to avoid unnecessary play dates. And if you find that your child has attended an event with more than 10 people gathered, just consider having them change their clothes and their shoes once they arrive home for those events. It's important that we remind our children that they to implement good hygiene strategies. One easy tip that I use with my triplets is that when they wash their hands, instead of saying time it for 20 seconds, I just have them sing the happy birthday song twice as they run their hands under soap and water. And that typically accounts for that 20 second rule that it, the time it takes for us to have optimal cleaning of our hands and to rinse off germs. And something else to do is make sure you remind your children how to sneeze how to cough, and how to use that flexed elbow so that they won't spread germs to others. Now, children, especially toddlers, they love to put their hands on everything they see and easily put things in their mouth. So it's important that we're sterilizing children's toys and that you're doing your due diligence to monitor that. Uh, when you're laundering items, make sure you wash them in the highest temperature of your washing machine to help optimize sterilization. Now the food is important to boost immunity. So it's recommended that children have at least five different fruits and vegetable choices daily. Now if you have a picky eater, try to get it in a smoothie. One of the smoothies that um, my children drink every morning, we simply put banana, mango, pear, and some spinach and kale for some really good balance of greens. And that's part of their morning routine. And that way, at least I'm getting some of my servings early in the day. 
And then throughout the day, we're adding more vegetables and fruits to their diet. So for those picky eaters, just put it in a smoothie. Make it frozen even, and they can have a milkshake. Also, try to avoid as many of those comfort foods right now if possible. There are a lot of chefs in the kitchen during quarantine, so use this time to research some healthy food options for your children. It's also important that you keep them physically active at this time. Go outside, get fresh air, continue to follow those rules that are required in your area, but children need to stay physically active, all right? Because you have to remember they're not getting the recess that they would normally get at, at school. So that's very important. I think that, once again, we need to stay aware. And when our kids go back to school, get more involved with their leadership team, their teachers, their principals. Make sure you're aware of any sick contacts or sick students at the school or any outbreaks. Um, try to avoid having your children interact with other sick kids, people who have fevers and may have other nonspecific symptoms. I mean, this is all important and they're easy steps we can take to keep our children safe. One other thing that patients ask me and other people as well, including my family, there are tips on how to boost the immune system for children and if supplements are recommended. And I keep that supplement list pretty short and I'd say maybe a good probiotic, you know, probiotic granules can be found at the store, which are kind of powder forms of probiotics that you can mix through foods, a good multivitamin. It's great making sure your kids are getting the right amount of calcium and vitamin D and B12 and all the fat soluble vitamins. And if you want to provide your child with a little bit of extra vitamin C, it won't hurt as well. So I give you all these tips to remind you that as I stated, coronavirus is still in our community. We still don't have a cure. So as parents and grandparents and family members, we must remind ourselves that it's our priority to keep our children safe. They can't protect themselves. So it's our job to do it for them. I want you all to have a great day. I thank you for listening. Go enjoy the weather out back with your family if you can, and just enjoy this time together. Take care.